Here are some of the new goodies that we've added to Thrive Architect in the last few weeks. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and let's have a look at some of those features in a bit more detail. Starting with the new link styles. I've opened up a simple page here where we have a text block with some links. And as you can see, this is a very default, just blue underlined link style. Now, we have new options for what we can do if we want these links to look different. One thing that's different is that when I click on a link, the link itself is selected and you can see we have a set of options for this link. So right away, what I can do is I can say, okay, I want this to be a different color. Maybe I want my links to be some kind of purple like this. I can apply that color and we can also change fonts, sizes and things like that. And most importantly, we can add one of many different effects. And you can see a preview in this window here. So we can create different link effects. These will be hover effects for your link. So on the one hand, you have your basic link style and then you have the hover effect that gives a user on desktop additional feedback that says this is a clickable element. So let's say we choose something like the left to right underline and apply this. And now you can see that this link has been updated and has the new color and the new hover effect. And in addition to that, we can also save this as a new style. So save it as a new style. i will just call it purple. And this is now one of the selectable link styles. So whenever I have a link, I can change that to any of my saved link styles. And as you can see, I've already saved another one here as well. So you can very quickly create specific link styles and effects and apply those to any links where you want them. And of course, you can also apply this on the landing page level. So on a landing page, you can change the default style that will apply to all of the links on the page. One of the practical applications of this is, let's say you have some dark background sections with light text, and there you'll probably have to have a different link style than on white backgrounds for that link to be visible. This is a really quick way to just determine one link style for your links on dark backgrounds and apply them wherever needed. Next up, let's look at the post list element, one of the most powerful elements in Thrive Architect and we've enhanced it with several new additions. And the first one is this. If we have a post list here, what we've had so far is that usually the text of a list item and a button or maybe an icon or maybe a featured image, those elements would be linked to the post. So if someone clicks on the text or the button or the image, that will take them to the post. But in some cases, it might make more sense to just link the entire item. So the entire block, with all the text and buttons and so on inside it can now be linked to a post. And that is one simple option that we see right here. Link entire item to content. If we flip this on, now the entire item is linked instead of individual elements within the item. This is a relatively subtle detail, but it can just enhance the usability of your site that much more. Now, a quick note on that, the templates are still in progress of being updated. So right now, what you'll see is that the hover effects no longer apply if you flip this on because the hover effect then needs to be applied to the parent element and no longer to elements inside it. We will be rolling out updated templates that work as you would expect as well. The next update is in the post filter option. So when we decide what kind of posts are actually shown in this post grid, here there's one new option that's interesting, which is you can sort them by date modified. So you can sort posts, let's say you want the freshest posts at the beginning of the list. You can now not only sort them by the date that they were published, but you can also sort them by date modified, which means that if you update a post, even if you don't update the published date, that will be bumped to the front of a post list. Another option that we've added by very popular demand is options for pagination. So now in the main options for a post list, you can see that here we have pagination type, and you can choose this to either be numeric, which adds this numeric pagination to the bottom, or you can add a load more button, which is a stylable button that's added to the bottom of the list. And on click, that will load the next set of posts. So now with the post list element, you can present a limited number of posts anywhere 
on any page you want. But you can still give your visitors the option to keep going through that list and see all the possible posts in that list. So that will adhere to whatever filter you've set. If you are showing posts in a specific category in this post list, then the pagination of the load more will just keep loading posts in that category until there are no longer any posts to show. Next, we have the updates to the lead generation element, a key feature in both Thrive Architect and Thrive Leads. The main difference now is that we have made everything much more accessible by adding all of the options you need to connect with your email marketing systems, to add the rules for what tags and campaigns to add, to add your fields and reorder your fields and have your post subscription success message or redirect. All of these options are now directly in the sidebar and much more easily accessible than before. You no longer have to go through a multi-step like setup wizard in order to configure your forms. You can much more easily do this all in the sidebar. Our next feature is fairly easy to miss, but it's actually a very powerful feature. And that is that you can now have a default content width assigned to a landing page and background sections can either inherit or override that default width. Here's what I mean. If we look at this landing page right here and we go to the landing page settings here in the breadcrumbs, you can see that there is a content width set here, which is currently at 900. And you can see that some of the sections like this one are set to inherit the width from this setting and some are set to not inherit that width, such as this one. And what that means is that here we have our regular text sections and I might want this to be narrower or wider and I can do that by changing this value right here. So these sections will change along with this value, which means that even if I have dozens of background sections, all of the ones that are set to inherit this width will all change as one. But at the same time, you are not limited to this width. So you can have a layout or a design where some of the sections will adhere to this width and then other sections like this top section here are made to go wider. And you can also change this with just one click. So if I go into this background section, it's simply a matter of flipping this switch that will make it conform or not conform to the landing page background section width. Now that also means that whenever we add a new background section, by default, this will be set to inherit the page width. So you don't have to know about how wide are the other sections to make sure that they match up. By default, it will have the right width. And again, if you want to have something that goes wider or narrower, you can always override that by flipping this switch. One of the basic principles of good web design is consistency. And this option just makes it much easier for you to have consistent width throughout a page design. Speaking of subtle additions, the next one is perhaps even more subtle, and that is the distraction-free typing mode. By default, when you are typing, you will always see the outline of the text block that you have selected. And you can now change this to distraction-free mode, which simply makes that frame disappear. And so as you're typing, you can go through your content and you can have a cleaner typing experience. So this is something you'll appreciate especially if, like me, you create all your blog posts in Thrive Architect. It just gives you a cleaner and nicer view of your content as you're focused on the writing. The next addition is for the video element where we've added one more option. It's now even easier than before to add videos from externally hosted sources. So if you're using something like Amazon S3 to host your videos, you can now find a dedicated option in the video element for that and simply paste in your video URL. And finally, a really small addition. If you've been messing around on a page and you don't actually wanna save any of the changes you made, just like I've been right now, you can now go into the save button and exit without saving. All right, that is a tour of some of the smaller changes and improvements that we've made to Thrive Architect features over the last few weeks. Stay tuned for more coming soon. In the meantime, let us know how you like these new features by leaving a comment below. And if you have suggestions or questions, Comments are right below.